Remote monitoring and really a lot of the digital transformations or disruptions that are talked about are very exciting for both healthcare and patients and just general citizens because there's a potential of getting expertise to the patient rather than the patient always having to attend a hospital or a clinic to get input on their condition. And ultimately, actually they can manage their condition themselves using technology to support their own decision making and then only getting a healthcare professional involved when that's needed and when it adds value. So the politicians are very excited about this. Reimbursement authorities less so and the physician community has concerns about technology being used for its own sake but actually excited about the potential of improving what we do for the future. If we think about a patient with heart failure, for example, there's a whole range of remote monitoring technologies. Now, telephoning a patient is actually remote monitoring of a patient, but it's not usually included in that description, but can have a big impact in terms of compliance with medication, assessing when patients are deteriorating, and supporting them. But normally what we're talking about are either standalone systems that are external to the body, like a blood pressure cuff, weighing scale, maybe oxygen saturation, symptom monitoring, um, all the way through to highly technical implants with just for monitoring purposes, such as the CardioMEMS device, a little butterfly-like thing that's put into the pulmonary artery, and you can interrogate that at home yourself and send the signal to the hospital to look at how well your pulmonary artery pressure is controlled. Or if you've implanted an ICD or CRTD device, that can give you a lot of information for free, which in theory you can interrogate as often as you like and then use that to contact patients, modify their treatment, arrange earlier review, for example. The challenge has been showing that all of this really adds value to what we offer. I think remote monitoring works best in a way for those that are remote, strangely enough. So if you live very far away from a coordinating centre or specialist centre, then remote monitoring may help you get the same standard of care as if you live closer to it. And it's bringing the expertise to you as a patient rather than the other way around. Now there's some things that face to face are really important for achieving and certainly gaining trust and understanding what's important to the patient cannot be done just by technology. But once that basis is there, a lot of the decision making we do conventionally face to face in clinic could be done remotely using a variety of techniques, uh, implantables, standalone systems, or things like FaceTime and Skype to actually have video consultations with our patients. The problem has been that it's quite difficult to change the model of reimbursement for what hospitals and physicians are paid for, but where reimbursement supports this, then you often see a lot of enthusiasm.